Hi, I'm Steve Matt. Thank you for joining me tonight. I'm your son or daughter's RTV teacher here at RHS. This is my 21st year teaching, the last 18 right here in Rutherford. Although in so many ways, it feels a lot like my first year. Despite all that's going on out there, I aim to make your child's TV experience as close to normal as I can. We're going to continue to have fun, to work hard, and be creative in our class together as we always have. I also teach the photography classes here. I run the RTV club, photo club, ski club, and coach the boys JV tennis team. So there's actually lots of ways that your son or daughter and I might be able to work together throughout the year. So here I am standing in the RTV room. This is our classroom where most of the magic happens. Um, before I tell you the details about our class, let me show you our room. Come on. This is our studio floor where you can see our main set in the foreground and our small chroma key set in the background. We also have our three studio cameras and teleprompters mounted in front. Now let's take a look at the control room. Here in the control room, you can see the audio engineer sits in the front. We also have these two large monitors up top for our director and producer to give direction during the show. We have these two smaller monitors and control surface for our technical director. Our CG operator works here creating the graphics and titles for the show. And finally, our source player picks all of the videos and audio that will go into the show. Here's some of the equipment that we use in class. We use Canon Rebel DSLR style cameras as well as the Canon Vixia video camcorders. We have a variety of camera mounts including gimbals, monopods, tripods, and other accessories. We also have different kinds of audio including boom mics, shotgun mics, wireless mics, and even the Zoom audio recorders. This is a quick peek at our video editor. Here in class we use Adobe Premiere. So now that I got to show you around the room and show you some of the equipment that we use in this class, let me give you some more detail about what we actually do. This slide here shows you a little bit of our software and hardware selection that we have for the students to use. The top left one, Adobe Premiere, is our biggest software. It's our video editor that we use starting with our next project and we'll continue to use all the way through the TV program here at the high school. We also use things like Adobe After Effects and Photoshop, which are a part of that Adobe suite, along with some other software from time to time that help us out. The right hand side is just a quick listing of some of the hardware, the equipment that I showed you a little bit earlier in our video. A good way to get an idea of the kinds of things we do in this class is to understand some of the projects that we do. So this slide shows you a listing of the projects that I expect that we'll get to this year. TV2 is a creative, hands-on, project-based class, much like TV1 is, but we shift our focus a little bit. We build upon some of the basics, the basic how-tos and techniques of TV1. We build upon the basic cinematography and lighting and audio of TV1, but really we start to focus more on digital storytelling. We try to do something with our projects. Um, we start our year kind of reviewing TV1 now. We do go over the cameras, we review our editing software Adobe Premiere, and we do it in our project that we call our lead-in. But then we start to introduce some new concept. Some of the digital storytelling projects that we do throughout the year are what we call our campus story, and it's really a focus on the montage style of editing that's used so commonly in Hollywood. We also do a skit where we use our continuity-based editing style, and finally, we end with what we call our sequential storytelling, which could be anything from a how-to video, a tutorial, or even a project that we came up with this year, what we call the plan. Um, as we move into the winter months, we do a satire project, which is kind of set up as a mockumentary where it's structured much like a documentary, but we're exploring the idea of satire and how that's used in film and TV. We also like to work into our first semester together, what we call our new tech free choice. It's just that it's a free choice project. The students can design and build their own project. And the only really guideline that I have for it is that they learn a little bit more about some kind of new filming or editing or lighting technique that we haven't gotten to yet. As we come back out of the winter, we start focusing a little bit more on filmmaking and a little bit less on video production. Some of the things that we get into are Foley and we explore how audio is recorded for Hollywood. We also talk more about directing and how the director can use the camera and cinematography to help tell storyline. We do that in a project we call the recreating a movie scene. We do get into a mood piece, which is really about emotion. It's about through cinematography and through direction, establishing the emotion within a project. And we kind of tie our whole year up in all the different kinds of storytelling we've done in our short film. Our short film is an eight to 10 minute long short film that the students will start earlier in the year with the treatment and proposal process. They'll script and storyboard, and eventually towards the end of the year, we'll film and edit it. Sprinkled in throughout the year, I like to encourage the students to take part in our SBEs, or our school-based events, where they can help be on the technical crew for anything from the RTV morning show to things like filming concerts, plays, and graduations. The next slide here shows us probably the biggest question of the night, is how do you grade the students? So this is how PowerSchool breaks it down. Um, we are a hands-on class, so 60% of the grade that they'll get for quarter one, two, three, and four 
comes from projects. And the category is called projects, tests, and quizzes, but pretty much everything we do is centered around our hands-on projects. Most projects carry with them two separate grades, one for the technical elements, things like color, contrast, focus, exposure, and editing, and then one for the media component, which is more about the cinematography and composition, along with the project-specific goals as defined by the project. Participation is a big part of our class too, making up 25%. Um, and very simply, I ask that the students are actively engaged in whatever it is we're doing on a daily basis. Some days might be lecture-based, other days might be critique-based, but most of what we do is hands-on. So a lot of our participation will really shine through as we create our projects this year. The last category, making up the final 15%, is what we call progress indicators. This is like checkpoints. 15% of the grade for the quarter comes from the student's ability to meet due dates on time and completely. This is a new slide that I added this year. This is to help explain a little bit more about the class's expectations for the remote learning environment. The very first thing we have is a quick reminder, and if you'd like to access it, just ask your son or daughter. It's something I've posted into all of our Google Classrooms, and it's the school's virtual learning etiquette. It goes into a full description of what the school expects in a virtual learning scenario. What I'm asking for, and this is a little bit more specific to our classroom, is that whether you're in school or at home, is that you follow along with us. Follow along our Google Calendar, our Google Classroom, and every time we're scheduled to meet, that you attend our Google Meets. Some of the things that when you are attending a Google Meet that I'm asking for is that you're there any time that our class is in session. Um, you should expect that even though you're at home, you should be attending class whenever we do meet. Um, if there is, for some reason, no need to do a Google Meet for the day, I'll post something including alternate assignments or directions right there in classroom for the students. A couple other things that help make this work. I do ask that students have their cameras turned on and that their mics are muted when they enter the Google Meet. I also like to see their shining, smiling faces. Um, I really do need to see them. It helps me judge whether they understand a concept to see if they're engaged in the conversation and the discussion that's going on. So I've talked to the students and I ask them to think about things like the angle of their Chromebook to make sure that their face is in the frame and to think about lighting. Make sure there's at least enough light in the room so that we can see them. Um, the final two things, one is to be on time. And finally, the biggest one, and this ties back to that 25% participation grade, is that I ask that even though you're home, that you become an active member in our classroom. I, I want you to participate. A lot of times I'll ask the students not just to raise a hand, but when they have a contribution to make, just to unmute themselves and to take part in our discussion. The next slide here are some of our resources. I do have Google Classroom set up for all of our TV classes. Um, the classroom is really the main way that we'll communicate throughout the year. Google site, I do use a Google site. It's a public site and it's a place where you as parents can go to get information from our Google Calendar. And of course, Google Calendar is, is huge for our students. I explained to them in class that everything we do is placed onto our Google Calendar. It has everything from long-term project due dates to even small classroom activities. So if the student is wondering what we might do in class today, they can look on the calendar to see it. They can also look on the calendar if they're ever absent and they need to know what they should be making up. And the final note on here is PowerSchool. I ask that you and the students check Parent Portal often. Make sure that what they think should be there is in fact there. Make sure I haven't made a mistake. And if I have, bring it to my attention. Please shoot me an email or the students can ask me in class why something is the way it is. Um, I would hate for a mistake I made to affect a student's grade. So you as the parents can also help out. Just keep an eye on Parent Portal. Um, PowerSchool is updated frequently. The last slide I have for you is really a follow-up. It's, it's where do we go from here, but what's next? After TV1, the natural follow-up would be the TV2 and the TV3 classes, but we also have the RTV Morning Show and the RTV Club. Um, Photography 1 and 2 are both art classes, but are very, very connected to what we do here as a digital media. And the last two classes that I note that are very similar to what we do here are our web page design classes and art by computer design. So thank you for tuning in and watching this video tonight. I hope it was less pain for you to watch than it was for me to make. Um, I also hope that you learned a little bit about our class and some of the things that your son or daughter will be doing this year. Hopefully you keep an eye out and you see some of our projects come home. Uh, if for some reason you have any questions or if there's something I didn't address that you really wanted to hear tonight, I apologize for that. But please reach out to me. Um, email is by far the best way to get a hold of me. Simply it's smett at rutherfordschools.org. Uh, shoot me an email. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks. Have a great night.